Hello everyone, welcome to BA Consulting Pro. This is episode 7 of our series DP203 tutorial and in today's video we are going to talk about Azure Storage Redundancy. So before going into today's video, these are the answers of our last episode questions. Please have a look and match with your answers and let us know if you have any feedback or any concern. Before going further, if you are new over here on our channel, please don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest updates and videos. What is Azure Storage Redundancy? Azure Storage always stores multiple copies of your data so that it is protected from planned and unplanned events, including transient hardware failures, network or power outages, and massive natural disasters. Redundancy ensures that your storage account meets its availability and durability targets even in the face of failures. When deciding which redundancy options is best for your scenario, consider the trade-off between lower costs and higher availability. So these are the some of the factors which can affect your decision while making your choice for Azure Storage Redundancy. The very first factor is how your data is replicated in the primary region. Second one is whether your data is replicated to a second region that is geographically distant to the primary region to protect against regional disasters. And lastly, whether your application requires read access to the replicated data in the secondary region if the primary region becomes unavailable for any reasons. Now let's check where you can find this on Azure portal. So right now I'm over here on my Azure portal and you can see that that I have this Azure storage account option. So I can click on that and to click create and in order to create new I can just click on this or just go inside this one and create from here. Once you will click on create option. So at the bottom on your first very basic tab you would find this redundancy option over here and here it's going to give you a definition that what does this mean which I just explained to you and also if you would drop it down you would find so many different options over here your LRS, GRS, ZRS, GZRS and everything it's over there. Right now I'm not going to create any more Azure account because I have already one so let's see how it appears over there. So if I go back and I click on this my Azure storage account which is BCP Azure Data Lake storage account and here once you will come under geo replication you will see that there is already one applied over here which is RAGRS. Now you can see that it's over there but this is not the only one. If you would come under the configuration settings so if I'll go over here configuration settings you would need to click over there and then again you would come under this replication. So under this replication you still have options to change it. So that's all you need to know where you can apply, how you can configure it or how you can change it. Data in an Azure storage account is always replicated three times in the primary region. You should always make a note of it. Azure Storage offers two options for how your data is replicated in the primary region and those two options are LRS and Zone Redundant Storage that is ZRS. Now let's discuss one by one these. Well, in case of locally redundant storage, copies your data synchronously three times within a single physical location in the primary region. LRS is the least expensive replication option but is not recommended for applications requiring high availability or durability. LRS provides at least 11 nines durability of object over a given year. LRS is the lowest cost redundancy option and offers the least durability compared to other options. LRS protects your data against server wreck and drives failure. However, if a disaster such as fire or flooding occurs within the data center, all replicas of a storage account using LRS may be lost or unrecoverable. 
To mitigate this risk, Microsoft recommends using ZRS or GRS or GZRS. So as you can see over your screen as well, there are the three different copies of the LRS and you can have a look into this. So now question comes, when should we use the LRS? Well, LRS is a good choice when you encounter any of these two scenarios. The very first is if your application stores that data can be easily reconstructed if the data loss occurs, you may opt for LRS. Secondly, if your application is restricted to replicating data only within a country or region due to data governance requirements, you may opt for LRS. In some cases, the paired regions across which the data is geo-replicated may be in another country or region. Now we are going to talk about zone redundant storage. So let's see what is this. Zone redundant storage ZRS replicates your Azure storage data synchronously across three Azure availability zones in the primary region. Each availability zone is a separate physical location with independent power cooling and networking. ZRS offers durability of Azure storage data objects of at least 12 nines over a given year. So, with ZRS, your data is still accessible for both read and write operations even if a zone becomes unavailable. If a zone becomes unavailable, Azure undertakes networking updates such as DNS repointing. These updates may affect your application if your access data before the updates have completed. When designing applications for ZRS, follow practices for transient fault handling, including implementing retry policies with exponential backoff. Here, you should also note that a write request to a storage account that is using ZRS happened synchronously. The write operation returns successfully only after the data is returned to all replicas across the three availability zones. Microsoft recommends using ZRS in the primary region for scenarios that requires high availability. ZRS is also recommended for restricting replication of data to within a country or region to meet data governance requirements. Here, you should note one more point that ZRS provides excellent performance, low latency and resiliency for your data if it becomes temporarily unavailable. However, ZRS by itself may not protect your data against a regional disaster where multiple zones are permanently affected. So what to do in this case? In this case, for protection against regional disasters, Microsoft recommend using DZRS, which uses ZRS in the primary region and also geo-replicates your data to a secondary region. So now I hope you would remember this point always because it's going to be very important for your exam point of view as well. Now let's move forward. Now we are going to talk about redundancy in a secondary region and what are the different types. So there are the two types as I mentioned previously. These are GRS that is geo redundant storage and second one is GZRS. So let's discuss about them one by one. The very first comes geo redundant storage. So you can see this screenshot on your screen right now. Geo redundant storage copies your data synchronously three times within a single physical location in the primary region using LRS. It then copies your data asynchronously to a single physical location in a secondary region that is hundreds of miles away from the primary region. GRS offers durability for Azure storage data objects of at least 16 nines, that is 99.999999 like that, over a given year. A write operation is first committed to the primary location and replicated using LRS. The update is then replicated asynchronously to the secondary region. When data is written to a secondary location, it is also replicated within that location using LRS. So in this diagram, you can see that how actually your data is replicated. Now we are going to talk about geo zone redundant storage. 
Please pay attention on the screenshot that you can see over your screen. GeoZone redundant storage combines the high availability provided by the redundancy across availability zones with protection from regional outages provided by Geo replication. Data in a GZRS storage account is copied across the Azure availability zones in the primary region and is also replicated to a secondary geographic region for protection from the regional disasters. Microsoft recommends using GZRS for applications requiring maximum consistency, durability, availability, also the excellent performance and resilience for a disaster recovery. So in those cases, you can use this and you will get up to 69 of high availability time per year. Now, as I was mentioning you, RA, RA is nothing but it's the read access only. So now we are going to talk about the read access to the data in the secondary region. Geo redundant storage with GRS or GZRS replicates your data to another physical location in the secondary region to protect against regional outages. However, the data is available to be read only if the customer or Microsoft initiates a failover from the primary to secondary region. When you enable read access to the secondary region, your data is available to be read at all times, including a situation where the primary region becomes unavailable. For read access to the secondary region, enable read access geo redundant storage RAGRS or read access geo zone redundant storage that is RAGZRS. And in your exam, I'm sure you will expect one question over this one. So please make sure that you study it very carefully and also you listen what I'm uh, what I'm trying to tell you over here. Now second comes, design your applications for read access to the secondary. If your storage account is configured for read access to the secondary region, then you can design your applications to seamlessly shift to reading data from the secondary region if the primary region becomes unavailable for any reason. The secondary region is available for read access after you enable RAGRS or RAGZRS so that you can test your application in advance to make sure that it will properly read from the secondary in the event of an outage. Now another point comes check the last sync time property. Because data is replicated to the secondary region asynchronously, the secondary region is often behind the primary region. If a failure happens in the primary region, it is likely that all writes to the primary will not yet have been replicated to the secondary. To determine which write operations have been replicated to the secondary region, your application can check the last sync time property for your Azure storage account. So how to check that? For that you can use Azure CLI and you can use the code which is in front of you on your screen. If you would like to know more, then I'll provide you the link in the description section and you can go and you can check over there. Now we are going to have a look at the summary of redundancy options. In this video, we talked about the LRS, ZRS, GRS or RAGRS and DZRS or RAGZRS. So everything now is in front of you on your screen. So you can pause your screen over here and you can have a look what is the availability time, what is the percentage durability of object over a given year and also the number of copies of the data maintained on separate nodes. So this is going to be very helpful when you are going to design your Azure storage account or for your exam perspective as well. Next comes the durability and availability outage scenario. So on your screen, on your left hand side, you can see all the outage scenarios. For example, a node within a data center becomes unavailable. Then what kind of redundancy option you can use over here, what you cannot use. And similarly, there are three more scenarios. So again, please pause your screen and have a look. This screen is going to tell you what are the supported Azure storage services. That means for LRS, what are the supported Azure storage services you can use, what you can use in ZRS or GRS and similarly others. So 
whenever you are going to design your Azure storage account, whether you are using Blob, Queue, Table, Azure Files, or Azure Managed Disk, you should be aware about what kind of redundancy option you can use for them. Portage storage account types. So what kind of account types you can use? That is whether you can use the general purpose V2 or general purpose V1, legacy blog, premium file shares, etc. So again, you can have a look over here. This would provide you the, all the details. Lastly, we are going to talk about the data integrity over here. Azure Storage regularly verifies the integrity of data stored using cyclic redundancy checks, that is CRC, if data corruption is detected. It is repaired using redundant data. Azure Storage also calculates checksum on all network traffic to detect corruption of data packets when storing or retrieving data. Now it's time for your knowledge check. Please look at these question and answers. You can pause your screen and let us know what are your answers. You can comment in the comment section and in the next episode I'm going to provide you the answers of these questions. You can connect with us, but if you are over here new, please don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest updates and videos.